Hello everyone and welcome to Biohackers Lab. I'm your host Gary Cohen and on today's episode I have Kelly Hogan. Kelly is a mother of three based in North Carolina who is a very public advocate about the zero carb diet. She has an incredible story of losing nearly 130 pounds to help her achieve a more ideal weight plus help resolve long-standing health issues. Kelly thanks so much for coming on to the episode for today. Thanks I'm excited to be here Gary. Thanks for having me. I enjoy your show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, I've had a few carnivores on the show already, and definitely you're a, a nice continuum of the story about the diet. And that's why I wanted to get you on, because doing some research about you, I mean, as I mentioned in the intro, your story is incredible. When any, I think when anyone is able to lose that much weight, and you know, anyone watching the YouTube video right now, they're going to see how healthy you look. I mean, it's it's who doesn't want that in life to be able to lose all that unneeded weight plus regain their health again and that's why I wanted to sort of share your story today so anyone listening could try just you know listen in and go ah that makes sense I can relate to that or you know just find out even more tips about this this diet that's um everyone's wanting to try at the moment yeah thanks yeah I I love to share my story I appreciate the the opportunity so to begin with then can you just give listeners an overview of what was your health like before you ended up on the zero carb or carnivore diet? Sure. So my entire life, from the time I was quite young, I tended to be quite heavy. Um, there are pictures of me in middle school, is especially when I gained. I was a pretty heavy child, but you know, it's kind of cute when you're little. About middle school, it stops looking so cute. And there are pictures of me with my grandmother where, <laughs> bless, it looks like I could eat her. I mean, I, <laughs> I was a really big, big kid. And that's tough when you're 12. Um, and I, I gained weight through high school and then I would, I would try to starve myself down a little bit in high school because it mattered to me so much from the time I was little. I don't ever remember not caring about my size, not even as a small child. I have a brother that's very close in age to me and he's naturally very thin and he, um, he picked on me. I mean, that's a normal thing for brothers and sisters, but it, it really bothered me from the time. I can remember. So in high school, I would starve myself down and then I'd do crazy diets. Like I'm going to try to go two days without eating anything. And, you know, in a few weeks I could see I'd lost a little weight and then I'd, I'd be starving again. And I would eat all of the fat free things I could find because I thought for sure if you didn't eat fat, you couldn't be fat. <laughs> that never worked. Of course, all of the weight, as soon as I'd start eating, it would come right back. Um, And it was just this constant cycle. When I went to college, I didn't gain a freshman 15. It was more like the freshman, sophomore 50. I gained a lot of weight. So by the time I graduated college, um, I was about ready to be married because my husband and I, we met in high school and we'd gone through college together. But I was I was quite miserable. My wedding dress was a size 22, 24 in the United States, which puts I was about 260 pounds at that point. Um, I would not have gone to a doctor over this, except that I was having um, abscesses, boils. I know that's really attractive. They were coming up on my legs, on my thighs, and repeatedly. And they were very painful. It would get cellulitis around it. Now, I know you're looking at me now, and you don't picture me with these. I was a really big lady who could barely walk, not due to my, just weight, due to the cellulitis on my legs boils that I would have to go have lanced and drained and packed. It was, this was serious. You know, those come from inflammation. My doctor is a really elderly, smart man. And he said, he sat across me, he said, if you don't lose at least 100 pounds, your life is going to be cut short. He said that you've got to lose weight. And I ugly cried in his office. Because that's all I had wanted to do my whole life was to lose weight. And I told him, I said, I don't know what else to try. I've tried no fat. I've tried cutting calories. I've tried running. I I don't know. I can't lose any weight. And he handed me a paper. He said, well, at first he said, it's the carbs. And I said, what are carbs? (laughs) I'd heard of them. It's not that I'd never heard of carbs. I really didn't know what they were. This was about 14 years ago. And, you know, I was in my early, well, I was about 25. I'm 39 now. Yeah. So 14 years ago, I was 25 and I didn't, I'd never had a real reason to know what a carb was. Nobody had told me it was the carbs. I only had grown up in the low fat and calorie restriction days. 
And uh, he said, carbohydrates are, and he gave me this little pamphlet that showed, you know, breads and potatoes and sweets, um, cereals. It was basically everything I thought I was doing right to eat. I was basically living off of skim milk and fat-free cereal, thinking that was the best thing I could do for myself. And he said, no, it's just full of sugar and carbs. That There's your problem. And I said, well, if I can't eat this, what do I eat? He said, for one year, I want you to only eat what's on the other side of this paper for a year. Come back and see me and let me know. I said, well, how much can I eat? And he said, eat as much as you want. There are no calorie restrictions. Just eat what's on this side. He said, and I don't care if it's your birthday. Don't touch anything on the other side. <laughs> so I, I, I looked on the other side and it had all kinds of meats, you know, steak, lamb, pork, chicken, beef, eggs, cheese. He did have a few low carb vegetables on there. And that's what I started with. I ate some green beans in the beginning. Um, and I was never a huge, huge veggie eater. Like I said, I was living off of cereal and milk. It's not like I was only eating cucumbers, but you know, I was allowed to have them according to him. Um, uh, and I ate some in the first year I lost 80 pounds and I never had one single boil come up. It's been 14 years now. I've never had another one. I went back at my one year checkup and he didn't know who I was. 80 pounds later, he looked at my chart. He looked at me. He said, Kelly, what did you do? I said, I did what you said. And he laughed. I mean, just full out belly laugh. He said, no one ever listens to me. <laughs> so it was a very exciting day for both of us. Just had just a happy, happy appointment where he was thrilled that he hadn't seen me for a year. Um, I didn't have a lot of other health problems, but I did tend to get strep throat pretty regularly every winter, um, just respiratory kind of normal stuff that we see as normal in our society. 14 years later, I can tell you, I haven't had strep. I haven't had a boil. I haven't had the flu, not once. I never miss work unless my kids catch a cold or I'm going on a field trip. I, I'm just, I feel so good now. So the plug, here's the way the progression went from, um, those few vegetables. I stuck to what he said for five years, five years. And I lost 130 pounds in that five years. It worked as far as um, how I looked. I, I looked exactly the way I wanted to look. At the end of that five years, though, I found that I was having to work pretty hard for it. I was not eating, quote, as much as I wanted from the other side. I found that in order to maintain that 130 pound weight loss, I was having to restrict a little bit. I was having to cut back and I started focusing a little bit more on those green beans because I thought, hmm, that's lower calories. I was going back to what I'd been taught, even though it had worked so well. And I was working out at the gym. I had a horrible fear of gaining an ounce because I'd been there for 25 years and here I was, I've made it, you know, I don't want to go back to where I was. And I would panic if I even saw the scale tremble. <laughs> I would, I would, if it went up an ounce, I panicked and I would go back to the gym. And so at five, at the five year mark, I looked fine, but I had this sense of, I can't keep this up forever. You know, it was just, and I also wanted children and my cycle had actually stopped. I was already having some fertility issues when I was heavy and now I'd swung so far the other way, working myself out and not adding, I wasn't eating a whole lot of fatty meats. I wasn't there mentally. Nobody had told me. The doctor didn't get me quite there. He had just said meat. And so I was combining my old thinking of low fat, low calorie with this new thinking of eat meat. So it was like, okay, let's eat some leaner meats. That has to be better. I, didn't, I, I just didn't know. So I started reducing. I had read about the Atkins carb ladder. You know, you climb the ladder. Well, I knew that didn't work for me. Every time I'd start climbing the ladder, I also started feeling bad and my scale would go up. So immediately I was like, oh, go down the ladder. <laughs> back, back. <laughs> and <laughs> too high, too high. And even if it was just, you know, one tiny rung, my body was really sensitive and let me know this, no, carbs are not good. So that was a clear sign. Um, so I thought, how low can you go and still feel good? And that's when I Googled, do you have to eat carbs? And can't quote, can you live on meat? And it didn't take a lot of Googling to find Stephenson, his reading, his writings, um, the bear 
and Charles Washington. Those were the first three things I found. Charles Washington had a group, a forum called Zeroing In On Health. Now it's a Facebook page, but back then it was just a forum of people. And there were all these pages of people. Every person had their own page, like a journal. And all these journals that were full of how many years they had only been eating meat and how they came to this way of life. And their story sounded so much like me. And these before and after pictures of the beautiful, vital, healthy, muscular, thin people who said they only ate meat and don't work out. Oh, well, that's the dream, right? I mean, <laughs> to look like that and not have to kill myself and starve myself, that that's all I ever wanted my whole life. My whole life, if somebody had given me a genie in a bottle and I could have rubbed it, I would have wished to be able to eat anything I want and not get fat. Uh, I mean, some people would go for world peace, but that was my take on it. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be skinny and eat. And that's what these people were claiming they could do. And so I told them that day, I said, by now, I really don't eat hardly any carbs. This should be a pretty easy transition. I did have to let go of um, diet soda because zero carb doesn't just mean it has no carbs. You know, it's, it's zero sweet, zero plants, all animal based. And so I told them, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to try going all meat and water and I'm going to quit going to the gym for now. Let my body rest. They said, let your body rest and heal. It's not that activity is bad. It's just that you, you probably need to focus on some other things right now, like getting your cycle back. If you want to have a baby, that was important to me. I'd been married by that point for six years. Um, so that's what I did. I rested and I ate a lot of meat and I watched the scale go up for a little while which was horrifying. It actually, I slowly gained for six months. I gained 20 pounds and I almost quit a million times. And it makes sense. And, and I do see this happen to women who have starved themselves and to women who have overworked in the gym, who are actually quite thin. They come to zero carb thinking, I am going to quit going to the gym and I'm going to eat platefuls of meat and I'm going to stay skinny. And sometimes they briefly gain and a lot of times people quit because that's scary stuff. But I had a support group that said, no, 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 you will never get fat eating meat. Stick with it. Your body is trying to tell you it needs a little fuel right now. It doesn't trust you. You held back your whole life. Give it food. You were, I mean, you can be malnourished while still eating, but you're just not eating proper foods. I said, eat, eat meat with fat on it and relax. And that's what I did for six months. I complained and whined and I ate meat with fat and didn't go to the gym. <laughs> and then after about six months, my cycle came back. I was feeling, by the way, another one, reason I didn't quit was I felt good. I was not hungry. I had energy. The brain fog had lifted. I was so much faster on my crosswords. <laughs> I felt great. I knew what I was doing was right. I was just trying not to let this 20 pounds. It was like this cloud over me every day. Um, uh, uh, just my old way of thinking, cut back, cut back. But I didn't, I stuck with it. And then at the end of six months, it's like the weight, it started to just melt back off. I was still eating, but it was like my body just finally breathed. Like, okay, you're eating. I can trust you now. <laughs> you're not going to go back to doing what you were doing. And that summer I became pregnant. I stayed zero carb through that pregnancy. And I'm not going to lie, that was, um, that was intimidating. Because there were not a lot of stories that you could go online to read about that said, hey, I was a straight up carnivore for nine months long to carry a baby. That wasn't really a thing eight years ago. Um, Charlene Anderson, she has put her story out there now, but it wasn't readily available at that point. She also had zero car pregnancies. Um, Joe and Charlene Anderson, they are amazing. They're heroes of mine. Amber Ahern that you had on, another hero of mine. Love her. Anyway, so I, you can find these stories now, but I was not able to find them when I was starting that pregnancy, and I was a very nervous mama, but I, the Charles and some of the support that I had at Zeroing In on Health, they said, look, you're a human carrying a human. You know how much better you feel now as a human eating this diet. Why would your little human be any different? And of course, the doctors and magazines all say, eat fiber, 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 or else you're going to have constipation and hemorrhoids and that was not an issue none of the everybody wants to know of course as soon as you mention an all-meat diet how do you poop that's the first thing 
want to know. And if that was not, not an issue. Um, and other common things, I never got morning sickness. I didn't throw up once. I felt pretty good. I didn't gain a ton, but I was right on track. I, I actually don't know how much I gained with my first pregnancy because that fear was so strong in me about gaining that I told the doctor not to even let me know. It was on my chart, a bright sticky note that said, do not tell patient wait. <laughs> and I did. So I still don't know. Now, I've, since then, I have, um, I have three children now. They were all zero carb pregnancies. And I found out that with the other two, I gained about 25 pounds with each. And they were all healthy. And that's how I got where I am. <laughs> Sorry to go on for so long. No, that's, that's story. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And again, that's exactly why I got you on because so many people are going to be re able to relate to that. And as you said, when you were on your journey, there weren't these other references. And that's why we need, you know, I want to interview people like you. So others who are starting their journey can go, oh, that's nice to know. There's another resource I could sort of learn from it because this is the way I want to eat now. Uh, so it sounds, yeah, I mean, there, there are a few good points that you brought up there. So this, you, you were first dealing with the psychology of this starvation and this, you know, the fat you in your brain, like the vision of you, but it, and how you were having to starve yourself for so long too, and what that starvation effect did to your hormones eventually. So you may have lost the weight, but as you said, your cycle that that wasn't being sorted just purely through the weight loss. Um, and I've had, a, I've also had. Um, uh emily mcguire on she's a ketone nutritionist and she said the same thing you know that a lot of the time it's you know you, you need to feed a woman need more <laughs> to, to manage their hormones too and you, you're another example of that um but just going back first to the the doctor who who gave you that surprise i mean so he must have been quite a forerunner was he sort of into the atkins modified atkins kind of world is that why he gave you that that pamphlet he, in the first place he actually mentioned the Inuit Indians. Now, I mean, this is a really old guy 14 years ago that says, well, you know, the Inuit Indians only ate meat. He's for real coming up on 90. So even at that point, he was, you know, I, I think he's coming up on 90. Have an ass. He's old. Okay. He's old. He's also about to retire. But yeah, so he says, well, you know, the Inuit Indians did it and they thrive. Eskimos too. I th hmm. Later, I found out like, wow, this guy was really... He was cool, you know? There weren't <laughs> yeah. a lot of people talking about this. And I don't, you know, I've never gone back to ask him. So what got you into that? But he's a very fit, thin guy who was still a practicing physician in his late 80s. So I have to think he knows something. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm, and I mean, that's, he's, you're pretty lucky that he actually gave you that tip. I mean, all those, yeah. the, we're talking early 2000s, wasn't it? There, so, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Just thinking back then, just to help people. So you would say the first thing that you would advise women who are thinking of following the typical, the same route as you, they may be listening and they've got excess weight that they've yo-yo diet and they've tried this, that and everything yeah. that fatty meats is, is important from the word go. Is that the, is that like tip number one, you would say? Yeah. So trust your body. My body knew that fatty meats tasted the best that that's what I liked, that if I had had my pick, that's what I would have gone for is a ribeye versus a chicken breast. I think our bodies intuitively know that. You know, if you put the two in front of most anybody, that's what tastes the best and what your body wants. I should have gone with that. So if you're going to, if you're going to give it a try, you need to, to trust your instincts. There, there are meals where sometimes the more leaner part of a steak tastes better to me and that's okay. Take it meal by meal by meal. What makes you feel the best, what tastes the best. If you're eating um, if you're eating a lot of fat on purpose to try to trick your body into doing something, I've seen that go the wrong way too. People end up running to the bathroom every five minutes and wonder what's wrong. Well, you're still not trusting your body. You've just heard eat lots of fat. And so you're trying to, you know, hit the butcher up for piles of fat and shovel that in too. If your body's not telling you to do that, don't do that. But Typically, a nice ribeye has both lean and fat. Eat what tastes good. For me, that's the entire thing, <laughs> regardless of size. I do have a very big appetite, and I can fully, I can just eat and eat. I can go out to a steakhouse and order their biggest, biggest steak and enjoy it and not have to worry about it. But in other words, don't try to force fat. Don't try to force lean because you've heard this or that. Just find a cut of meat that you like. 
and eat it. And at the next meal, find a cut of meat that you like and eat it. And if you start stringing meals together like that, I think you will find, or at least I did, that mental clarity, emotional stability. That's another thing we hear frequently. Um, what is his name? Peterson, who's uh, got that big article out right now about how um, an all meat diet helped cure. Um, yeah, Jor- Jordan Peterson and Michaela Peterson. Yes. Yeah. So eat more even kill moods. Um, and then you might also see the scale go down. Give that a little bit of time because, like I said, if you have crushed your metabolism with all this yo yo dieting and starvation, that could take just a little bit of time. Some people see immediate re- results, especially if you are a big old man that's been living off of potatoes and bread for the past 50 years, and then you suddenly go on a zero carb diet. Prepare to buy new pants, friend, because it works really quickly. (laughs) But for some of us who have tortured ourselves, it can take just a little longer to actually see the scale move. Um, But yeah, focus on food that you like and reflect on how you feel, your energy levels. And then if you feel like stepping on a scale because you're curious, go ahead. But it could take a little time for some people. And so I've read too that um, at one stage your three ingredients in life were just meat, egg, and cheese. Do you still have egg and cheese? So I eat eggs typically on the weekends more because, well, purely because I just don't take time on school days to wake up and scramble eggs. (laughs) I get up really early and I have to be there really early. But on the weekends, I have a big bowl of scrambled eggs and I love them. And as far as I know, there's no reason not to unless they just don't make you feel good. Uh, There are lots of zero carbers that feel great on eggs. For dairy, for me, I find that I have to restrict dairy because I get a little bit of a like stuffy nose. Uh, There are plenty of people that get a little bit of allergic reaction if they go too much. And I find that I can very easily get addicted to it. I pour a little cream and coffee one day and the next day I'm like, oh, that was good. A little longer pour, longer pour until I'm really in it for the cream. And I don't like that feeling of... Mm. Of, of not being able to stop thinking about the cheese in the fridge. I would rather just be free from, from it. And right now, that's where I am. Um, I stopped with dairy back in January. Now, if I'm going out to eat and there's a, a burger, uh, yeah, okay, it's my birthday. I probably haven't put a piece of cheese on it. Live it up a little, right? <laughs> put a piece of cheese on my burger and a few extra slices of bacon and I'm happy. Or a big steak with a few blue cr- cheese crumbles or something. I'm not saying I never do it. But as far as making it part of my everyday life, I actually feel a little bit better without it. Just less cravings for it and no stuffy nose. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, and so... Also, how many times a day do you find you need to eat? So you said you can have a big meal in one sitting. Are you sort of in that, you know, there's a camp who like to eat just one meal a day or um, there's people who like to eat multiple meals? Like what what have you found is how you've ended up on? I tend to eat about a pound of meat around 11 o'clock and about a pound of meat at dinner time. And that's just my routine these days. I know there are some zero carbers that tend to eat one huge meal of two, like two pounds of meat at a time. That, I don't know. I don't prefer to feel quite that full at one time. I kind of like to get good and full. And then several hours later, I eat one more time. And then I'm not usually hungry again until the next day. If I were to get hungry before 11 o'clock the next day, though, I will eat. Because I am a huge believer in trust your body. If my body says I'm hungry, it's hungry. It's not like with donut cravings, where it's the sugar talking or the addiction talking. Even cheese will sometimes trick me, where I think, oh, maybe some, you know, a slice of cheese. To me, I can be full and cheese still looks good. But if I'm looking at a plate of steak, if my body says eat it, it's because I'm hungry and I need some fuel. So if I were to feel hungry for meat three times a day, I would eat three times a day. But here lately, it seems that two big meals, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, I, you know, I did a, a strict carnivore diet myself back in January, uh, just to experience it to see what it's like. And I've always enjoyed meats. You know, I come from Africa, and, and meat is yeah. abundant there. So, uh, yeah, I've always enjoyed a good steak. But I found it interesting myself that trying to eat only meat also just satiates me it makes me feel full and so yeah i just um i that that was also a problem i found sometimes like i 
I'm a big guy, I'm six foot three, but I'm like, how do you eat that much meat sometimes? Because it just makes you feel so full compared yeah. to other food types, I found personally. I completely agree. A pound of meat, and I am quite happy for several hours. Yeah. So, I mean, some other good tips that um, you, you were saying there about just trusting your body and eating the different kinds of meat. So, are you also then still more in the beef kind of range? Because that seems very popular in the carnivore movement. Is it's predominantly beef and maybe and bacon? I would say. But yeah. is is that sort of the is the beef and bacon is the is the main categories that people eat? Um, there's not many just chicken kind of carnivores, are there out there? I would say that most of us would eat most any meat that somebody prepared for us. So on, every Sunday night, I go to my in laws' house. And she is awesome to every single week fixes a very meat-based diet. Now, there are sides for the other people, but she knows that I'm there for my pound of meat. <laughs> Not that I'm weighing it, but, you know, till I get full. I eat till I get full, and I just know me, and that takes about a pound of meat. So pork chops, lamb, uh, there's lamb, steak, chicken with a skin. I, I just can't do a plain skinless chicken breast, but mm. she doesn't. Who does? <laughs> she doesn't fix that anyway. Whatever she has, I eat it very happily. But day in and day out, I prefer beef. I, I tend to feel my energy level is good. I stay more satisfied for longer. I just enjoy the taste of it. I just mm. prefer beef. And I most zero carbers I know do. There are some that tend to lean more towards more fish in their diet than I do. I would have no problem with eating fish. It's just not regularly a part of my day. If my husband were big on fish and were grilling up a bunch of fish, I would happily incorporate it more. Um, it's just partly habit mm -hmm. and how I feel and what I like to eat, just the taste. Okay. So what's your cooking style? How, how do you like to cook your meats? Are you So are you um, just grilling on a stovetop or on a barbecue? Or like, what's, your, what's your favorite? Um, if, it's, if my husband is cooking, then he throws it on the grill large amounts of meat on the grill and then I can keep it in the fridge and just eat off of that for a few days. If I'm doing it myself, I either put it um, in the oven under the broiler or on the skillet and just brown up some meat in the skillet. Um, yeah, I am not, I don't like to spend a lot of time, thought or energy on my food anymore. It is not entertainment for me. It's just fuel. So if I can just brown up some burger patties in a skillet, it tastes good to me. And if it doesn't taste good, I guarantee you I'm not hungry. And I can check back in two hours and it will taste amazing. And if it doesn't, check back in two more hours and it will taste amazing. <laughs> but one of my favorite quotes is that hunger is the best sauce. I can't ever remember who said it, but I like that quote. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And, and so if, if my burger patties don't taste good or my steak doesn't taste great to me, I can usually check back a little later. Suddenly it tastes amazing. So I don't I don't like to spend a lot of time on that. I like to spend my time on playing at playgrounds with my three little ones, on doing arts and crafts with them. I'm also a school teacher, so you know that takes more than a few minutes a day. I, I stay pretty busy with life, and I don't care to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. New zero carvers are like, oh, I need some recipes. And us older zero carvers are like, eh, just brown some meat. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to keep you full. It tastes good. And it doesn't take up half my day. I don't want to wash a bunch of dishes. I don't care if my food looks like carbs. You know, new zero carvers are sometimes, they want their food to look like a pizza. They want it to look like a, a soup or look like a sandwich. So they're making this cloud bread, the zero carb cloud bread or zero carb. That, I don't need my food to look like a carb. I don't want it to taste like a carb. I just need some meat in my belly, and I'm happy. <laughs> and so what do you also think? When I, I'm, I'm reading in the Zero Carb community, a lot of people want to go all the way to just eat, only eating raw meat too. Yeah, what's have, up with that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask you, like, so having, I mean, you're, you're part of the veteran community, having done this for well over a decade and still doing yeah. it continuously. Like, yeah, is this something else that is a new thing or have has it always been a topic in the Zero Carb community? Should I only eat raw meat or cooked meat? It was a topic. Um, new, I, so I've been doing the Zero Carb part with no sweeteners, no nothing for almost nine years. And then there were five years before that low carb. So I've only okay. been part of the Zero Carb community for almost nine years. 
And nine years ago when I found them, there were people doing raw. And I was like, whoa, there was just one chick. <laughs> you know, you can always find weirdos. And I'm not going to lie. We can find a few extra weirdos because these are people who are really open minded enough to consider going against everything they've ever heard. So sometimes they're odd in more than one way. <laughs> there was this one girl who was all into um, not wearing clothes, not cooking food, and would type constantly on the forum from her bed, naked with a bowl, bowl of raw meat. And I was like, I don't know if these are my people. But it turns out, <laughs> it turns out that um, most of us do cook our meat. And there are some people that claim that they feel better with raw meat, to which I say, awesome, you are going to save a little bit on your energy bill. And the rest of us, we are cooking our food to whatever degree we like it. Um, I will say that most zero carbers do not tend to prefer well done meat. We like it a little pink. Um, but I've even seen some who say, I, I, can, I can eat meat, but it better be well done. But they are, I'd say they're pretty well rare huh? <laughs> <laughs> good pun <laughs> um, most i would say the majority of us are cooking our meat to medium rare to rare okay and then seasoning so is it just salt any pepper whatever or any, anything anything yeah. else whatever tastes good to you that you can handle most of us do at least salt and some pepper i i take salt and pepper on my steak um it is acceptable in our community, as long as it makes you feel good, to use garlic or garlic salt. But we do make a distinction to say there's a difference between some seasoning versus two cups of salsa. You know, when we say, yeah, seasoning is okay, then some people are like, yay, <laughs> you know, dump, dump on all of the things that it matters. If you want to get rid of all of your cravings, we have found after watching thousands of people go through this. If you want to be have freedom from cravings, have your body be fit and healthy, you're not going to probably be able to dump tons of stuff on your meat, whether that be tons of cheese, tons of seasoning. Meat needs to be the focus. You can take a, a steak and put some blue cheese crumbles on it, most likely, or some whatever people season. I don't know. Garlic. Is that what people put on their steaks? <laughs> I've been doing salt and pepper so long. That's just all I do. And there are plenty of zero carbers. I'm not saying salt is required. Um, Dana Spencer, she, is it Dana? I just call her Dana. She's the Dana of zero carb health. She's been doing this for 10 years. She eats zero seasoning at all just because she doesn't prefer the taste. So when people show up and say, oh, no, you got to salt your food heavily for all the electrolytes, she's like, no, you really don't. And she says what I say, trust your body. If your body likes the taste of salt, add some salt. If you feel bad when you add salt, stop adding salt. Just follow your taste and follow how you feel. And I think that'll take us so much further than doing what we read somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I feel just fine adding salt to my meat. And I really prefer the way that it tastes that way. And when it comes to drinking wise beverages, um, some people seem very strict and it, it only water, nothing else. But right. uh, uh, you mentioned coffee earlier. It's, so, you know, are you okay with having that? I am more than okay with having that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have coffee in the mornings. Um, I'm not, I've gone years of zero carb without it. My first couple of years, probably three, because I was basically pregnant <laughs> off and on for the first three years, pregnant and nursing babies. Um, my first two children were very close together. So I went probably three years without coffee and I felt fine without it. I do enjoy the taste of coffee. Some people say, well, that's plant-based. It is, but I'm not eating the plant. It's some water soaked around plant. I'm not saying it's optimal. We always say meat and water. That is, that's the best. If you're having any issues, that's the automatic recommendation, meat and water. If you're having zero issues and you like the taste of coffee, you can probably keep coffee. Lots of people do. I can't tell any difference. In fact, I, I recently did a month without it and couldn't tell any difference. The only reason I did the month without it was because I was having some itching on my neck, which turned out to be laundry detergent. And I felt like an idiot, but <laughs> that's all it was. I switched brand. Suddenly I felt great. So sometimes it's the food, sometimes it's the coffee, and sometimes it's your laundry detergent. 
<laughs> so I mostly drink water all day. Okay. I do like coffee um, first thing in the morning. We do. Te- um, I would recommend that you get some breakfast first because coffee can kill your appetite and mm-hmm. you're trying to nourish your body, not starve it. you got to really get out of the thought of, oh, if I drink coffee, then I won't need food for a while. <laughs> That's not the idea here. We're trying to nourish our bodies with meat. So have a burger or steak or some eggs in the morning. And then if you enjoy the taste of coffee and it doesn't bother you, have some coffee. It's probably fine. Go back to meat and water for the day. Um, The other thing as far as drinks that I get asked about is alcohol. I don't know if you were going to go there, but Mm -hmm. we consider it non-optimal. I do tend to go on a date night with my husband about once a month when I get um, my parents keep the kids And there's just something that feels congratulatory, celebratory, and fun about having a drink. I don't know. I guess that's just society and culture. And so I tend to have one drink of something non-sweet, like a gin martini, something that's not carby or sweet tasting. I would not want anything sweet tasting at this point. I'd probably gag. And I'm not saying that this is the plan, what you should go for. It's just something that I'm just going to be honest that I still do about once a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, you know, that's why I like to, because I don't think anyone is perfect in life. We're human at the end of the day. So it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a general guideline and you've just found that this general guideline is more optimal for you. And yes, things happen, situations, whatever, but you know how to get back on the train now oh, in yeah. the direction. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not out there binge drinking or even trying to get drunk. It's just, um, one, one drink on a date night for me, not for everybody, mm. for me, <laughs> has not proven to be an issue um, with this diet. Okay. And so then with you also having eaten this way for so many years now, I'm sure you're going to have people start wondering, you know, as they did with, I had Dr. Sean Baker on and his blood work and, you know, and, and uh, and just trying to see because it's all about also saying okay so what actually happens to your body so you've had all this amazing weight loss you know you've got your your cycle back you've had children so it it seems like you're you know you're ticking all the boxes that you're actually healthy but then they'll ask you so but what does your blood say i've got the paperwork to prove it i know nobody cares how you look or feel they just want to see the paperwork um i do go to my same doctor um and he, he does like to do my blood work partly just to say, hey, it's still working kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually have my numbers pulled up right in front of me. But I'll tell you, tell you this. I do post my blood work on my blog. And it is www.myzerocarblife.com. And zero is Z-E-R-O, myzerocarblife.com. And it's got my most recent blood work from the spring and blood work from the past couple of years. I wish I had blood work from um, prior to this diet. All I know is that they used to say my cholesterol was a little high, but at that point, I I don't remember. It's been a long time ago, and they don't still have – I asked them for it. They said they took all of their old records. It's it's in like a warehouse somewhere. They move them out every several years. Anyway, I don't have that, but I do have my current blood work. My triglycerides tend to stay between 50 and 60. And my good cholesterol stays around 70, HDL around 70. So my ratio still t- um, is about 0.9 to 1.1. And to me, that's what everybody has said tends to be the most important indicator of anything is that ratio. Mm-hmm. And they say that anything below two is optimal. So 0.9, yay. Okay. <laughs> I don't put as much emphasis on the paperwork part because I know that if I did have a lot of inflammation, I would still be getting these boils. There was a, I did a podcast with um, a keto person who has never tried carnivore and she's really into the actual paperwork part of it, the blood work. And she said, well, what is this? There was one statistic, one number that she was really after. And it's, she said, it's the best indicator of inflammation in your body. Do you know what your number is on bated breath? She waited us. I have no idea. I've never had that tested. He has tested calcium levels, vitamin this, vitamin that, pages. As far as I know, he's never tested that inflammation number. And I told her, I said, if I were having any inflammation issues, I would have asked him to test it. 
but they're gone. I, you know, my skin is clear. My energy is good. I don't get sick ever. You would think after several years of this, something would have shown up by now. <laughs> um, and to me, that that's my best indicator. But for those that like the numbers, there's a lot of numbers on my website. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, it's just something I had to ask because it's it's some it comes up all the time. So oh, it should, and I'm okay because I'm perfectly okay that with that. I do think triglycerides and your HDL are good numbers to look at. You know, for heart health, they say that it, it's a pretty good indicator of future heart issues. And I was very happy to see low triglycerides and high good cholesterol. Yeah. And I'm guessing, I don't know if I haven't seen any carnivore women who have done it maybe, but something like a bone scan just to see how strong their bones are. Cause I'm sure some people might say, oh, but are you not maybe putting yourself at risk of bone thinning disease like osteoporosis, for example, cause you're losing, you're not getting enough nutrients. So uh, it, it, that would be something of interest. Maybe Absolutely. if someone ever did that. I'm pretty sure it is Dana at Zero Carb Health. There's somebody over there who's done this a long time that has had bone scans. And they actually, there was a lady who was having, I, I don't even come close to remembering her name, but she was having some bone density issues and has actually seen improvements in her numbers with the zero carb diet. I've never had it tested. I'm, I'm 39. Maybe at mm. some point they'll start doing that, but they've never even offered to do any bone density scans at my age, at my very young age of 39. <laughs> <laughs> why would they but i would be curious maybe yeah. in another maybe in 50 years they'll want to take a look at them <laughs> when i'm starting to approach middle age yeah <laughs> so how has it been then also raising a family eating this way so d d i guess even with your kids um who were who were growing inside you and you were eating this this way uh, um how how do they eat um like did you just give them the options to in life or like I'd be interested to sort of how the, the sort of uh, it would be another interesting point is that your relationship for food and the way you grow up and your and your body image I guess the lessons you've learned from that how are you trying to teach your kids not to sort of fall into the same trap maybe in a way yeah well for one thing I don't talk about my weight or anyone's weight around my kids because I spent what feels like my entire life thinking about weight and I don't want them. They've never known me to have a weight issue. When when they were born, I looked like this. <laughs> Maybe not full hair and makeup. <laughs> <laughs> when they were born, I was already about this size. And I don't want them to know that I've spent so much mental energy on that in my life. And I don't want them to either. Um, they, So my husband, he eats carbs. He eats whatever he wants to, and he doesn't have a weight issue. When he ever does see the scale go up, he knows what to do, and he cuts back on carbs, and he loses the weight immediately, and then goes back to frozen pizza. That's <laughs> yeah. He knows it all, and he has said, you know, when he gets older, if he starts having any trouble, he'll probably do this too. In the meantime, he's just he's focused on other things. Um, for my kids, so they've got one parent that eats all of the things, and one parent that eats meat. And before we had these children, I had, we had to have the talk, me and my husband. Okay, so how are we going to feed our children? I would have loved for them to have been little zero carvers, of course. <laughs> and he would have loved to have gone out and taken them out for ice cream. And neither one of us were going to be really happy with that. So we came to a compromise. And that was, we we're going to try to focus on low-carb foods, um, not sugars. Even he knows, of course, that the sugars and ref especially... Um, a lot of grains and even he, he's opposed to all of that. So my kids have never tasted grains. They've never had a cracker or a cookie. Um, their ages are seven, five, and two. Before people start calling social services, because <laughs> people get crazy if you mention not giving candy to a child. That's, I mean, crazy. They get upset and angry. They're like, what about Halloween? Well, they, at this point, they don't want it. They don't like the smell of it. They have no sweet tooth. They have tasted fruit, and if a fruit is really sweet, they can't take they can't take it. They won't eat it because they don't have a sweet tooth. Um, they are the happiest, most delightful children. <laughs> they are really there for those of you who are watching. For you can see me, look deep into my eyes. They're happy. They are not. Um, 
they're not deprived and upset about their lack of donuts. They don't want a donut. They eat mostly they eat lots of meat. I allow them to have vegetables if they want them. Two of my three do not like vegetables. I know that's shocking because so many children crave them. Ha <laughs> ha. But I actually did come out with one that does like vegetables and we let her have them. If they want fruit, we do limit fruit just because of the um, sugar, but I let them have berries, especially if they like, if they want berries as a snack, they can have them. Uh, their metabolisms are surely not as screwed up as mine were. And many of us who have been living off of sugar and junk and starving ourselves and overfeeding ourselves and malnourished, you know, they, they've lived like this their whole lives. And so I don't worry so much about the berries as I would for someone like myself. Um, but they don't have any added sugars and it's not about weight loss for them. They are super fit trim. They're actually like ripped kids. They're so strong. You should see them on the monkey bars. They're really strong, but it's not about the, their weight. I don't need them to be skinny. I, I, I just want them to feel good. And they do. In fact, if my older daughter, the seven year old, so in tune with her body that if she eats too much fruit, she immediately knows. She does not feel good. Sometimes it even, she says it will burn when she says body. She said that it hurts her stomach. She gets belly aches. She just knows that she feels awesome when she doesn't eat a lot of fruit. Well, she calls them sugar. When I don't eat a lot of sugar, I feel really good. And she says, someday I might be like you, mommy. I say, look, whatever makes you feel good. As you get older, you just eat what makes you feel good. And that's what they, that's what they do. I, I'm trying to also teach them, listen to your body. If you are craving some berries, I'll give you some berries. It's, you know, it's okay. But for the most part, they eat. I do try to incorporate plenty of fats, animal fats into their diets. I'm not feeding them skinless, boneless chicken breast either. They love ribs. They lo you should see my two-year-old with a steak. Oh my word. She kills it. She'll double fist it. She goes for it. <laughs> <laughs> they all they love meat and i think i think it would be very unusual for a human to not love a piece of very savory well marbled piece of meat and so they are very natural humans who love that too it's just that they have not they don't have the addictions of um sugar and candy and carbs that other kids do or some other kids do and they're okay with that. I'm not going to lie. It's sometimes a challenge because everything that includes kids these days, um, there's going to be sugar involved. If there, Whether it's a party, if it's Bible school, if it's you did well on a test at school. Um, my daughter had a teacher that would walk around with mini marshmallows in a bag. And when kids would answer questions, she'd hand out mini marshmallows all day long, mini marshmallows. And so I asked my daughter, I said, well, what would what would work for you? And she she said maybe a raisin instead. Okay, so we got some unsweetened just raisins, and I gave the teacher a baggie. I said, would you mind just doing that instead? And it's not like she was getting baggies of them. It was just throughout the day. If she answered three questions right, and she had gotten three raisins, and I don't want them to feel like they don't fit in, but I also don't mind them being different. I really don't. I hope they're different throughout their whole lives in amazing ways. I, I, am, I have become very okay with the idea that I am not like everyone else. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I was going to, yeah, I mean, I, what I'm hearing here is that you're, you're teaching your kids a healthy relationship with food, you know, so it's just listen to your body, eat what you want to eat, um, and yeah, listen to those cravings that do come or, you know, what your body says. So, yeah, yeah I think you're, 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 you're doing the best you can, you know, in that situation. And that's what most of us are trying to do with kids is, yeah, yeah hopefully I'm giving you the right info and we'll see where you come out. Um, but, as you, I like that idea of what you just said there about that. You, you realize, you know, you're not a part of the norm because no. your social situations too, that must be interesting when you've gone out for dinner with, you know, you're at a barbecue or there's a, a meetup with a whole bunch of other parents and they see, you know, you've got all the other wives and they see you take out a pound of meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> and I can just imagine that these other ladies are kind of think, well, what's Kelly up to? Like, how did she just do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, at this point, most everybody knows. I mean, there's no surprise anymore. But yes, for a while when I would meet, and I, you know, every once in a while, there'll be a new mom there. And 
And you can see, did that chick just pull four burger patties out of her pocketbook? Yes, I did. <laughs> and if it is a barbecue or something, like we had a birthday party this weekend and it was, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs is a pretty common thing. Well, I am in luck. <laughs> so it's good. Um, if it's something like a potluck, I do tend to just pack something in case no one cooked a giant pot roast or something. Um, typically places I go, there's going to be meat. I don't go to a lot of vegetarian restaurants or anything. If I go to a restaurant, I, I will usually just order. I'll say, hey, I'll tell you what I want. And then you can tell me the easiest way to order this. I want a plate of meat, whether it's steak, burgers. I just need I just need a plate of meat with no sides on it. And they'll say, oh, and some restaurants will say, yeah, actually, I can just order you a side of steak and not charge you for the whole meal. Oh, beautiful. Let's do that. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think it's it's only getting easier and easier. I think um, before, if you were to say the word keto to people, that didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything to me 14 years ago. But now you can say people say, oh, are you on the keto diet? And it's <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Yes. <laughs> kind of, right? And yeah. I'll, sometimes I'll say like keto, but carnivore style. Okay. And people tend to get that. Um, if it's something someone can relate to and it makes them bring me a plate of meat faster, then I'll just go with yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so also talking about that, so you get, so you get some great tips there with the restaurants and going out and, and eating out. And the other question I, I always see is the budget question. So yeah. bu budgeting and going, is this diet just not too expensive to do for that long? Uh, uh, do you have any tips like what, what you found um, is the best way to budget being a carnivore in a family? Uh, so you can get two pounds of meat for about $8 where I live. You know, $4 a pound is pretty common. Whether you're getting that at um, a drive through for real, you can get four four burger patties for four bucks where I live. Or if you're going to um, the grocery store, $4 a pound is pretty normal where I live. And so that's $8 a day. $8 a day is actually a really reasonable amount to spend on an adult's food for the day. I guarantee you my husband will spend more than, more than $8 for lunch today. He'll mm. go out and get a sandwich with a side of fries and a drink, and he's going to pay probably $10. So I, I can live for $8 a day, throw in an extra 50 cents for a K cup of coffee. And you know it's pretty cheap, actually. If you're not getting the sides and or spending a lot of money on soft drinks or something, then it's a, it's pretty reasonable. Um, even if you were eating three pounds of meat a day, it, it's pretty cheap in comparison to everything else. Also, you're going to save on your doctor bill, so there's that. <laughs> uh, people should watch the youtube video of your expressions that was fun <laughs> um and yeah so even uh talking about meat and buying meats i have you ever gone the route of trying organ meats then to, as as not only from a taste variety but even maybe from a cost perspective because you know organ meats can be cheaper in some cases yeah oh also that's um, I wanted to throw out there, um, for people who think you have to eat ribeye all the time, ribeye does tend to be more than $4 a pound. There's an amazing cut of meat called chuck eye. And unless you live in North Carolina, because I want no one else buying chuck eye in North Carolina, those are for me. But people outside of my state <laughs> should definitely check out chuck eye. I call them poor man's ribeye. It tastes to me just like a ribeye. There's tons of marbling on them, but they're far cheaper. But the North Carolina ones, Oh, horrible. Don't even try them. Those are all mine. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, organ meat. Yes, yes, that is a cheaper way to go. I don't tend to do it just because I don't prefer the taste. But I'm sure there, you could probably hit up a butcher and get their throwaway fatty meats and organs for, you know, pretty cheap. Mm. You could do it. I've gone and asked when I first started this, my body just craved the fat. So I'm um, probably because I hadn't had any in so long. <laughs> so I would go and ask my butcher, do you have trimmings, just fat trimmings that you get rid of? He would just give me tons of fat trimmings with small amounts of meat on it. And I would just throw that in with what I, I was eating. That's not my recommendation unless you are craving fat. Again, listen to your body. I'm not saying go eat plates and plates of fat to lose weight. That may not work for you. If you keep in mind, when I was craving fat in the beginning, I was actually gaining a little weight. 
but my body just needed it at the time. And I've gone through phases when I feel like I need a little more fat. Like when I'm pregnant, for example, I feel like I just need a little more fat. And nursing babies, I think your ba- your body, or at least mine did, needed a little bit more fat on my meat. So that's an easy way to get some butchers. Just throw that stuff out. Mm-hmm. And so it sounds like with your journey to your the amounts of food and the type of food have fluctuated over time, as you said, as your body was going through different stages there. And yeah. And now you're at the the kind of the chakai ribeye, two pounds a meat a day is, yep. and that's that's where that's like your body set. But I guess the good the good tip I'm hearing there is for any women who are going to go through this, just be prepared. There's going to be times you're going to be so ravenous and eating tons of food, and maybe you're gaining some weight, but then some some reset happens, potentially even up to six months down the line, and then it sounds like you might not even feel like you need to eat that much food, and then things change, and yeah, just be prepared for that. Yes. Yes. Eat when you're hungry. Don't eat when you're not hungry. (laughs) That's going to change day to day, depending on your activity levels, depending on probably even depending on hormones and what your body's needing to do. Your appetite's going to change day to day. I am not set to a two pound a day. It's just that that's where I tend to be. If I were to Mm -hmm. go out and suddenly start doing something crazy, like just running marathons, I'm sure I would need to up that. But It's probably not happening anytime soon. (laughs) So that tends to be my norm. Um, But trust, trust yourself. Your body knows what it needs. (laughs) So just coming up to the end of the conversation here now, uh, support places. So we've, you know, we've talked about this and maybe some listeners now want to try it out themselves. Do you have any preferred support groups or places that you would recommend? I do. So I help admin a Facebook page. And before I give this recommendation, I'm not saying it because we get a single dime. I just admin. Those people don't get paid at anything, but we are there to help. So if you would like specifically a group that I am at every single day in Charles Washington's group, who has been on um, Sean Baker's show and a lot of shows recently, um, he's been at this more than 10 years now. Um, that group is zeroing in on help. So you just type that in your search box on Facebook. Another one that we have found is really the exact same true message with people who have been doing this many years, including Dana that I mentioned, that is zero carb help. There may be other groups out there, but I do know that some will get more on fasting and some are more on restricting and some are more about some weird stuff about enemas and I don't know. We, we, we try to keep it. These, if you're into the message that I'm saying today, the way I have come about this and the way that um, I have found my optimal health. Those are the two groups I would recommend. And then I also, um, at myzerocarblife.com, I'm not selling a book or anything, but my email address is on there. People email questions often. I have a frequently asked questions. There, there's um, a, a page there about zero carb during pregnancy. I have a page that's all about my blood work, a page with just tons of before and after pictures because that tends to be what people focus on. They just want to see how big was she. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you're curious, that's there too. Um, there is one very small ad on the page. That's it. That It's not like I'm there for clickbait. It's, it's not an ad-centered clickbait page. But if you would like some extra support, those are three resources. Um, I know that Sean Baker has been putting out lots of zero-carb interviews lately with some doctors if you would like more of the doctor side of it um but those are some good resources yeah and i'll link to all of those in the show notes too oh, so just a, a, so a final thought then are you are, your plan is just to stay on this diet that is my plan right there to keep feeling the way i'm feeling and keep eating the way i'm eating i've lost all desire for anything else the best mm, now i'm going to say losing the weight was the best okay <laughs> losing the weight was really good part of this diet but also losing the carb cravings and i don't have to hold back from anything if i'm hungry i can eat i don't have to stay in a gym if i feel like running around i just go play tag or chase I, but i don't force myself to do anything really i force myself to get up for work sometimes <laughs> but as far as um the way i eat and live my life it is very much follow my body's lead do what makes me feel good and I'm not dieting because I stay quite full and I eat a lot and feel good and I have no desire to do anything else. 
Fantastic. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for sharing your personal story. All your uh, hints and tips, it's been both funny and so informative at the same time. And I'm so glad I've got uh, had you on the show. I'm so glad I got to meet you kind of face to face here. I enjoyed our chat. Thank you.